Alrighty y'all, welcome back. And in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a very basic CI CD pipeline in a way that whenever we merge any code into our master branch, then that code is automatically gonna be deployed to our server. So that way it prevents us from having SSH into our server, pull down, update everything, yada, yada. It's gonna save us a bunch of time. However, before we just go ahead and get started, what I wanna do is I wanna give you a high level overview of kind of what we're gonna be doing. So the steps that we're gonna be doing is I'm first gonna make a unique SSH key. Now with this SSH key, I'm of course gonna be storing the public key on my server. And for the private key, I'm gonna configure it to be stored in GitHub. And what that's gonna allow is GitHub the ability to communicate with my server. And once we have that set up, then we can go ahead and make a workflow to deploy everything. But pretty much set up the communication first and then get into the good stuff. So whenever you create a new SSH key, I'll show you the command right here. So pretty much saying that we wanna generate a new SSH key. These are just some of the settings for it. And the file, I don't wanna just have it override my default one that I always use. So I'm gonna call this SSH GitHub. Now, whenever you create this, make sure not to include a password. If you include a password, then, well, your automation is gonna break because, well, it's gonna require someone to manually type in a password. So go ahead and just hit enter to use a blank password or no password, however you wanna call it. Enter again, and there you go. So as we can see, we now have our SSH key pair created. And this one right here is your private key. And this one right here is the public key that's gonna be stored on the server. So it doesn't really matter the order that we do this in, but let's go ahead and first, uh, might as well just set up GitHub to uh, store this private key. So how do we do that? Well, in our settings, what we can do is scroll down here to go to secrets and variables and click on actions right here. And we're just gonna make a new repository secret. So the name of this secret, I'm just gonna name it very clear, SSH private key. And for the actual value of this, what we can do is we can just cat out this. So, I can clear this. So cat, this, and there you go. And by the way, even though um, what just got logged out, it says beginning, and then it has your key, and then um, an end, make sure that you actually include these lines right here. Not just the stuff in the middle, but the actual line that says beginning and end. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste that bad boy right in there. Beautiful. Add secret. And now we can reference in our workflow this uh, private key by using SSH private key. So now that this is taken care of, what I can do is, let me just go ahead and do this in a new tab. I'm gonna SSH into my server, Ubuntu at, and that's my IP. And all right. So what I actually want to do is just cat out this public key because we're gonna be using that in just a second. So let me clear my screen and log this out. So this is my public key. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Now to add this to my server, what I do is I'll just use nano, sudo nano, and it is in SSH in authorized keys. And that's the one that I use, that I use by default. So right under here, I'm just gonna paste that new one in and save the file. So now my public key is on my server and I believe we can just close this out now, clear this and yeah, pretty much good to go. So before we actually write this workflow, there are two other little things that I need to do. Let me pop open GitHub again, click the right thing. All right. So you know how we just added this uh, private key right here. What I also wanna do is I wanna add two more secret values. One for the host, in other words, well, I might as well just do it. It's probably easier that way. So I'm gonna create a new uh, secret and this is SSH host. 
And for this, I am just gonna give it my IP. And then I'm gonna create one more. And this is SSH user. And this is just the user to log in. So whenever I log in, I said SSH Ubuntu at that IP address. And this way I can just use variables instead. All right, so now we got all of our secrets configured. And yeah, I think we are ready to start writing this workflow. So how do we do this? Well, remember in workflows, what I can do is since this workflow is gonna be triggered whenever I merge code into master, I'm just gonna create a new file called master.yaml, just like that. And for the name of this, I am gonna say continuous integration. Now, unlike before, where we trigger this on pull request, what we wanna do is trigger this, I don't even really have to explain it, kind of self-explanatory, on pushes to the branch master. So anytime we merge code into master, this uh, workflow is gonna get triggered. Now, another thing that I wanna do, let me paste this in first, is what this is basically saying is that if you just merge code into master and this workflow is in the process of deploying, and then let's say that right after that, you made another merge into master like right again. Well, in this case, we don't want like these two separate processes deploying code at the same time. So what this says is if there's any of these workflows already in progress, then just go ahead and cancel that. And that way the second one is the one that actually gets deployed. So in other words, it pretty much makes sure that only one of these workflows can run at a time, even if you do two merges right after each other. Now for the jobs, unlike before where we only had one job, which was the quality insurance, here we are gonna break up this workflow into two separate jobs. Now the first job is gonna be that quality assurance job. In other words, it's gonna be this workflow because before we deploy any code, what we wanna do is we wanna run this, again, like I said in the last video, just to double check and make sure that our code is properly linted and properly tested. So before anything happens, it's first going to run this workflow. And again, this is how you run other workflows within a workflow, pretty much just give it a name and say uses, and then a path to the workflow. And then after this, which hopefully um, this workflow passed. After this, we are gonna write one more job, which is our deployment process. So we are just gonna give it the name deploy, and this needs keyword is gonna reference this job right here. So this is pretty much saying that unless this passed, then don't continue. In other words, we need this to succeed before we can deploy. Now for this deployment process, we are gonna be setting up, of course, the commands to actually like SSH in and um, do some other stuff like deploy the code. And for this, we can just run it on an Ubuntu environment. And what exactly do we want to do in this environment? Well, this process is gonna consist of two separate steps. The first step is configuring just our SSH, make sure that we have everything set up to connect. And then the second step is actually running to the command to deploy and update the code. And what this means is we are gonna change into the directory where our app's at. We're gonna take down whatever's running with uh, Docker Compose down. We're gonna pull the latest updates and then we pretty much just uh, rebuild and yeah, spin everything up again. So for the first step of configuring SSH, let me paste this in and then I'll kind of talk you through everything. So the name, we're just gonna call it configure SSH. Now, what we need to do is we're eventually gonna be running this command and I'll talk you through what this does in a second. However, this command is going to require environment variables. So in order to get these environment variables, what we can do in the easiest way is just to reference the value that's stored in GitHub and whatever that value is, just map it over to an environment variable with the exact same name. So this is pretty much taking a GitHub secret and converting it to an environment variable that we can use in our commands. And then once we have those environment variables that we can use, we're just gonna run this command right here. So this is actually multiple commands, 
But what this is doing is first, and remember, this is all happening basically in a blank version of Ubuntu. So we're first going to make this SSH directory, since that's just where the uh, private keys go. And then once we have that directory made, we're just going to take the value of whatever was in this environment variable and stick it in this file right here, which is SSH GitHub. In other words, we're just creating our signing key file. Now, this line is just changing the permissions of that signing key file. And then last but not least, we are running this command right here. So this is a little bit strange if you've never seen that syntax, but basically what we're doing is we are marking the beginning and the end of this bit of code, which is pretty much saying we are making a new host called target. And this host, is pretty much our server's address. This is gonna be the IP of our server. The user, this is gonna be Ubuntu. The identity file, in other words, the signing key that they're gonna use is that one that we just created right here, or not the signing key, the uh, private key. I was thinking of my app logic. Um, the log level, just log out any errors. And the strict host key checking. You know whenever you first SSH SSH into a server and it says, hey, the server identity, yada, yada, and you got to manually type yes. Well, what this does is it just says, hey, don't worry about that. Uh, we're not, don't bother us with having to type anything. Just uh, go ahead and you know skip that part. So anyways, this pretty much just configures um, the where we want to log in and how we're going to log in. And then with this bit of code right here, we're going to cat or pretty much like display it out. And then this redirect directive pretty much just sticks it or appends it to this SSH config file. So in short, we are taking this text and appending it to this file. So now whenever we SSH into the host target, it's going to pretty much know exactly what system we want to connect to and how we want to connect. Now with that said, we only need to run one more command. Let me go ahead and paste it in and that is this command or this one last step I should say. So this is just gonna run our actual deployment and to run our deployment, what we do is we're just gonna SSH into this target. In other words, SSH into my EC2 instance. And now once we're SSH'd in, we pretty much just write the commands that we would normally do if we were just like, uh, you know, already SSH in there and updating the server. And of course to do that, what we need to do is we need to change into the cooking core directory. That's where the app is. Now after this, we're gonna run Docker compose down and that's gonna bring down those containers. Remember, we're gonna have one for the database and we have another container that the app runs in. Now, once those containers are down, we're gonna pull down the latest code and remember at this point in time, everything was already merged into master. So this is like brand spanking new code, the latest um, changes that you made to your app. And once we have the latest changes, we're just gonna run Docker compose build to rebuild those images with the latest code. And then once we have everything built, then we can go ahead and spin up those containers using Docker compose up, run it in daemon mode. And then we're just gonna make sure that we have everything recreated and yeah, get all the latest stuff. So let me actually just add a blank line to the end of this. And now, as soon as I push this up, since I'm not on any other branch and I'm just pushing right up to master, this should actually kick off this uh, CI process. So let me just go ahead and push it up and I can say testing CI CD. And let me just commit and push that and check it out. So now let me go in my actions and you can see that yes, this uh, new workflow is running and I wanna view the details of it. So I'm just gonna click into this. And this is how it's displayed if you have multiple jobs. So the first job that we have, if I reference back here, is this QA job. What actually references this right here. So it's gonna check all my uh, linting and testing. And if that succeeds, then it's gonna go ahead and run this deployment script. 
And as long as I didn't mess anything up, it should automatically deploy that. So let me pop this back open. All right, looked like everything passed QA. Now we can see if our deployment process is working. Actually, let me click into this. SSH configured properly, running deploy, looking good. Wow, pretty quick. So this looks like it was all good to go. And we can verify that. Actually, if we go to Vataxia Net Admin, so it looks like we're getting an error, but this is actually good because, well, errors aren't good, but whenever I update my server, then right after what it does is it has to, uh, of course, restart Docker and restart Nginx. So this just means that Nginx is restarting. Now, the Nginx process should restart in like, um, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. So as long as I refresh that, I can see that yes, everything was deployed and restarted successfully. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you set up a very basic CI CD workflow. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is that even though this is indeed a bare bones working CI CD pipeline, this isn't like the ideal process. And I say that because Remember, whenever we deployed this, even though I was kind of happy whenever I saw that Nginx error, you probably don't want like a production environment throwing these errors. And we'll talk through some solutions on how we can get around that and some trade-offs between different um, deployment processes. But for right now, I think that's enough for uh, this video. We are now getting more familiar with GitHub Actions and CI CD. So yeah, in the next video, let's see what we got to cover. So we're going to be uh, spinning up RDS, uh, Postgres database, and then we're going to be using multiple instances and setting up a load balancer to distribute the traffic across those instances, and then getting into some monitoring and debugging tools as well. It is going to be fun. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see y'all next time.